splitting of bones of the arm and elbow region, we've got here uh, a distal anterior view of a humerus and hopefully immediately you can spot what we're looking at because here's a very large medial epicondyle which stands out quite a lot. Lateral epicondyle nowhere near the same size. In between the epicondyles naturally we have on the medial side the trochlea, the hourglass or pulley shaped articular surface there for the ulna and then the capitulum, the small round ball there to articulate with the radius. So a as uh, proximal or above, um, just superior to the trochlea, we have the, um, oh, don't you hate that, the coronoid fossa, and then just above the capitulum, we have the radial fossa. Now, either side, uh, and, and just proximal to the epicondyles, we have a ridge. So here's a medial supracondylar ridge, and on the lateral side, it's a bit more pronounced, a bit easier to spot. There's the lateral supracondylar ridge, which is an important muscle attachment point. So a couple of the most proximally attaching extensor muscles, so brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus, will be attaching in here. Then on the posterior aspect, we have, oh, we can still see the trochlea nicely here, and then we can see the olecranon fossa there. Now, if we have a quick look at the proximal ulna, here firstly on the posterior aspect, we can see the olecranon. Then if we uh, turn around to an anterior point of view, we can see the, the coronoid process. But of course, if we have a lateral point of view, we can see it more clearly. You can see that bit sticking out there. And you can see if you squint or half close your eyes, it kind of looks like a crow's beak. Um, then we've got the trochlear notch, just superior to that. Oh, and it's really cool to see here. You can see two facets pointing in different directions. So that's the, the idea that uh, when, you, when you flexed or extended at the elbow, that a different part of the, um, the ulna here will be in closer uh, con or proximity, not contact, with the uh, uh, trochlear. And so you get a, a, a lateral excursion in extension of the forearm, and it, and it moves more medially inflection. Um, and then just inferior to the coronoid process we have the ulna tuberosity and what attaches there? No, not, not the biceps brachii but brachialis. So the brachialis mu muscle attaching in there and just then on the lateral aspect of the coronoid process then we've got a little radial notch there for the, ra the head of the radius to articulate with. And distally, but in line with where the, the radial notch is, again, pointing in, the, in a lateral direction, we have the interosseous border. And that's quite a sharp, it's the sharpest border there on the ulna, so you kind of can't miss it. The interosseous membrane be attaching into that. So that's just a few structures on the proximal ulna. A few on the radius now. Now with the radius, this whole bit here at the proximal end is of course the head, but we can break it up into a couple of different structures. So the head has an articular fovea at the top. And what's a fovea? A, yeah, a small shallow depression, brilliant. So that's a depression in there that's going to articulate with the capitulum. Now then we have an articular circumference so around the outside, at the head of the radius, and that, of course, is going to articulate with what? No. Well, both, yeah. So it's the ulna, the, the, notch, the radial notch on the ulna, and also the articular cartilage that's on the inner surface of the annular ligament. So good stuff. So that's going to articulate with both of those structures there. So that's the articular circumference. That's the articular fovea, and if either one of those pinned, that's, that's the name you should write, whichever one it is. If both of those are pinned with the same letter, then it's head of radius. Okay? So both of those structures make up the head, but individually you, you should write whichever one it is that's pinned. Now just distal to the head, then we have the neck, that slightly narrower part there, and then distal to that again, we have the radial tuberosity where the 
distal tendon and the biceps brachii is going to attach. And then, as with the ulna, we have an interosseous border, which is again the sharpest border on the bone, and that one naturally will be pointing medially, and that's going to be where the interosseous membrane again attaches.